Hi guys, it's Jessica. I want to welcome you back to my channel. Today I do want to talk about something that's like a little bit of a contentious topic. Freeze frame dress, jumping in here for just a moment, you're going to see me a couple times throughout the video. So the first thing I want to say is a slight trigger warning for anyone who might be sensitive to childhood abuse or institutional abuse. We are going to mention the 60 scoop and residency programs. And since I mentioned them, I do take a few minutes to briefly explain what they are. I'm going to try to put trigger warnings in the book with timestamps so that people can skip over those parts. But I wanted to say right here at the top, if you have any kinds of concern or sensitivity in this regard, you might want to sit this video out. The other thing I want to say is the 60 Scoop residency programs for Indigenous peoples. Those are awful events and I don't want anyone to think that I don't have significant moral or ethical objections. I hope that everyone on all sides can agree that these residency programs were terrible and that we need to band together to prevent them from happening in the future, but also to help victims and survivors of these programs. And to that end, I do have a couple of help hotlines and possible charity areas for you to help donate and support these people in the links down below. And also in my links, there's going to be more information on residency programs, more places you can go to find Indigenous stories, just so that you you can be more informed and better educated on this topic if you are one of those people where the residency programs are new to you and you would like more information. And today specifically I want to start off with The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klum. This was first brought to my attention by Jess Owens and I'm going to go ahead and link her video in the description down below. I will also be linking the Listen to Indigenous Voices Performative Allyship by the Native Lady Book Warrior. And I'll be linking another Native person I know here on YouTube, Aaliyah Kai, where she talks about the 60 Scoop and the history of Indigenous people's residency programs, both here in the US and in Canada. She and her family have some personal experience, so I feel it's very relevant for anyone looking for more research to consider what she has to say on the topic. Recently, TJ Klum came out and said one of his influences for the House in the Cerulean Sea was the 60s scoop, which for anyone who doesn't know is about how indigenous people, their children were taken from them and forced into these residency homes and where they weren't allowed to communicate with their family, speak their own languages, and were abused in other various ways that I don't want to get too specific about because it's upsetting and graphic and it's not that far in the rear view mirror. I think a lot of people were unaware that things like the 60s scoop had happened either in Canada or in the USA. I feel like more people are aware in Australia that these residency homes and practices happen to the indigenous people there, but not many people are aware that it also happened here in America. To be honest, these residency schools are not actually like a new thing. This is a thing that you can see done in England as well to a lot of Irish people and I think also to some Scottish people as well. And if you trace it that way, you can sort of see where colonialism itself and that history of the Western world has harmed indigenous people or native people in their homelands historically for a long time now. Just to clarify, this history doesn't take away from the horror or the suffering that human beings have gone through as a result of these practices, and it's not to point blame or absolve anyone for these tragedies. My only goal with these comments is to provide a context surrounding residency programs. The 60 Scoop and the fact that Americans, Canadians, the governments, they removed these children from their family homes and put them into schools where they were mistreated and that this has happened has happened recently is not a well-known thing. It's not something that we talk about as openly as the Australian residency schools for those indigenous people are discussed. And even though I knew about residency schools, it wasn't something I learned about in my primary education or even my secondary education. It's something that I learned about because I was interested in indigenous culture here in the U.S. and when I started doing 
doing that studying, I came across the 60s scoop and other stories like this. And that's why I was personally aware of this information before TJ Klum explained it further or before the horrible news that we got from Canada finding a mass grave of indigenous children that's never been reported before and speaks both to terrible record keeping, the horrors that were done in these residency schools, and just an overall tragedy on a lot of levels. The fact that they have gotten away with this and that I feel like a lot of parents and family have wondered about children for a long time and just have never gotten any kind of resolution and this is not something like a bad person in society did but this is something that was government sanctioned and that a whole bureaucracy was fueling and it's a you know it's a pretty horrific thing I'm gonna leave some more links to information about indigenous residency programs in the links down below so you can research it more on your own I don't get too far into the residency programs or what happened here in this video. What I want to talk about specifically, did TJ Klum have the right to take the 60s scoop and use it as inspiration for a fantasy novel? Several indigenous reviewers have come out and expressed upset over the house on the cerulean seat. There's a conversation going on in indigenous circles and I am sitting in at the corner and listening and trying to figure out exactly what those indigenous voices are saying and what my responsibility or other writers, readers' responsibilities are regarding things that take another culture, a minority culture, and use that information or use that history to tell a story. Certainly if I separate it from the House in the Cerulean Sea and I just look at the plethora of Holocaust fiction that exists out in the world and that seems to be okay and it's written by people who are not Jewish, it seems like you can take a tragedy that happened to another people and either fictionalize it and oftentimes historically fictionalize it. I've seen it transformed into a fantasy setting as well. So my thinking is like if you could do something on the Holocaust that's so directly linked instead of remotely removed, then you probably can do something that's more oblique like the House in the Cerulean Sea and it is okay. But I don't, I'm not the authority on this. It's just where my head is right now with those thoughts. And I'm open to hearing counter arguments or to hearing where or how I'm wrong in my line of thinking or how my line of thinking is privileged in this way. When I'm writing, part of what I'm trying to do is explore topics that are sensitive and that are hurtful or that are affecting people in our society here. And that addressing directly head on, just coming out and stating it might be too hard or might raise political and societal implications where I just want to talk about this specific area of it without that other baggage. So I fictionalize it or I set it in a fantasy setting or I just take those little pieces and I bring them out. And to me I've always thought of this as like a safe way to explore that. So hearing that taking inspiration from something like the 60s scoop might not be a safe way to explore that personally upset me and left me a little bit at a loss of how I'm supposed to interact with and overall process some of these tragedies. Maybe fictionalizing things, talking about it in fiction, scraping those serial numbers off and using that to express thoughts, feelings, opinions, ideas we have, and maybe further that discussion isn't the right way to do that. I wanted to explain where my perspective is, where my head is, and why some of this is hitting me in a hard way and in a way where it's really difficult for me to know what the right thing to do is. Once you know that there's influence from that, you can see it. And I think some people who are more familiar with residency programs might have been able to see that beforehand. Certainly the story to me struck a chord how we've historically treated disabled children where parents were told to put them into these institutions and these homes where they lived separate lives from childhood to adulthood and we've gotten rid of these institutions as well but that's what the house in the cerulean sea reminded me of if residency homes and indigenous people's stories were more forefront it might have reminded me of that instead or i might have been talking about the two similarities between how we treated our mentally disabled children and how the government forcibly pulled children of indigenous people away from them but regardless these are all these tragedies that happen with children and i don't think tj Klum is directly involved in any of them is he allowed to 
write a fantasy story or something sort of like that is happening. Not just is he allowed to write it, but is he allowed to publish it and profit off of it? Is that ethical for him? And I still don't know about the profit part. I feel like art-wise, he's okay. Just like any reaction you have to his art is valid, whether you're hurt by it or offended by it or, you know, any feelings. If you feel great about it, that's all valid. That's your personal experience, your interaction. So I'm not trying to invalidate anyone's experience with that book or any book. And I think that people have the right to protect themselves as well. So if you read a summary or a story, whether or not it got inspiration from something that has affected you or affected your family, you have a right to think that it reminds you of that and not want to read it because of that or find it hurtful because of that, even if it, it's not a direct inspiration from that. Even if TJ Klum had never come out and said that he used the 60 scoop as inspiration, if an indigenous person read the book, was reminded of that, and didn't like the book because of that, or felt emotional, or even felt like maybe TJ Klum shouldn't have written that. That's all a valid thing to think and feel. I'm not trying to invalidate anyone's views here. Part of this is I'm trying to relate it to my experience and to how I feel about women who are portrayed badly in fiction or serious issues that affect women more than men, like um, SA for example. And certainly I've read books where SA was handled poorly or where I felt like it existed just for shock effect or it was a plot point and none of the characters were treated like actual people. And I've seen both men and women portray SA badly. And I haven't liked the book, I've gone out of my way to state that I didn't like the book and why I didn't like it. And I've even Sometimes I've talked about how like this author doesn't know what they're doing and shouldn't tell stories like this. Maybe that's what we're saying here that TJ Plume shouldn't have told a story like this or that he didn't tell the story well or that he didn't treat the material with the heaviness and depth that it deserved. Something else I want to touch on in this area, it's not just the House on the Cerulean Sea as an isolated incident where these issues weren't handled well. Any minority group, whether we're looking at women in fiction, indigenous people in fiction, people of color in fiction, there are many, many bad takes or unkind portrayals of these people in fiction. And in fact, some of the novels that we hold up as classics, standards of the genre, things we couldn't live without, are things that are found to be sexist, found to be racist, found to promote harmful and hurtful stereotypes. And we teach them to our children and force people who might be sensitive to those kind of portrayals to have to read them and celebrate them all the time. So, you know, as someone who has read a lot of classical literature and has often been negatively affected by some of the portrayals in it, I understand why a person might just be tired. Sometimes you just want new things to be more understanding, more thoughtful, and to treat you with the dignity and respect that you expect other human beings to bestow upon you. And that could be what's happening here in the Cerulean Sea as well. Or it could be that the way that he revealed this inspiration was the problem. He did choose in an interview to discuss that the 60 scoop was part of his inspiration right after we'd recently found a mass grave of indigenous children from one of the residential schools. So timing could be an issue. While indigenous people were grieving for this new revelation, this new loss, to bring it up and talk about it like, this is something I didn't even know about, but then I used it as inspiration for my book. It's not really the right time. You know, it feels like you're pulling attention and energy away from people who are grieving or suffering and making it about you. And a little bit, it feels very sales pitchy, like you didn't feel like you sold enough books and this is your opportunity to make your book relevant again or to encourage people to read it. When really at this time, we should be encouraging people to read indigenous voices and indigenous perspectives on residency schools, not on some kind of fantasy version that somebody else wrote that has some elements. I think too, this issue is really complicated because there's a bunch of different parts to it. There's like looking at the book from a perspective where it's art and it's self-expression and there's looking at it from the perspective of what other people are interpreting and seeing it when they read and experience it. And then there's this third monetary 
capitalism, publishing industry element as well. So I think it makes sense that people have a right to create art however they feel. And it also makes sense to me from the reviewer, reader part that you can react to that art in whatever capacity you want. I think where things get sticky for me is in this capitalism publishing area. There's something to be said about taking a story that's not yours and that our society as a whole is still learning about and you're telling their story and profiting off their story and possibly even taking a spot that could be an indigenous person's spot to tell their own story. Because we all only have limited time and funds, right? So you can only read so many books, you can only buy so many books, you can only support so many authors. So if over here there's an indigenous person's tell story and there is a white person's story. Both of them are stories about residency programs in this situation. This guy got the publishing bowl and this indigenous person did not get that because there's only so many slots and people didn't want to take a chance on that story. We don't really know what kind of research TJ Plume has done so I don't want to say he didn't do the right level of research but it doesn't seem like he reached out to indigenous people in any way or he reached out to survivors of these programs who exist to decide discuss with them what their perspective or their experience was or what was most noticeable to them. Certainly when you read a story um, that's woman-centric, that's about essay, usually you can tell if that person has ever interacted with another person who has experienced essay. And you know granted the statistics on essay are really grim, so almost everyone has met someone who has a experience like that. It's a little bit harder to find an indigenous person or a group of indigenous people who want to talk to you about this, who might be willing to open up about this, and who might be okay with you using their experiences to build a framework with. I think maybe that's an issue too. Like if someone is not even willing to discuss something with you because they don't want you to use it, maybe that's the issue. Like I said, I'm having some trouble with this because I do think that we build stories from events in history that's not necessarily our history where the house in the cerulean sea is so fictionalized it's a different world than ours i have some trouble processing the idea that it wasn't right for tj Klum to use the 60s scoop or to get influences from the 60s scoop in creating his alternate world it would be really different to me if tj Klum had written this story in our world in our universe and was taking the characters or indigenous Indigenous people instead of magical people, or the magical people and the indigenous people were obviously the same. I would understand more clearly why people felt like he didn't have a right to do that. And I'm not even really sure in this conversation if most indigenous people felt like he didn't have a right, or if generally speaking there was just a lot of hurt surrounding the timing of this rel revelation and surrounding how he decided to announce it, how he didn't provide accurate resources, and possibly how he didn't reach out out to the community to do more research before using that story in this way. Again, like it's not my place really to decide that, it's just I'm here having this conversation because I do have some of this information on hand, I have been listening to this conversation go on, and I'm trying to process slash provide a perspective or areas that might be confusing. It's never anyone any minority person's job to educate someone from the majority, which in this case is me. At least I want to put some of my honest conversational points out there or some of my honest confusion because I would be open to having a conversation and I would be open to correction or to more information or places to go for that information doesn't have to be provided by that specific person if they've got an info dump somewhere or they've got a book they recommend. I'm good with that too. In some ways I prefer it because it gives me something to highlight and to mull over and to return to and something that I can reference when we continue to have these kind of conversations. I am sorry if I stepped on anyone's toes or if I've spoken out of line. I'm really curious about this and the correct etiquette. It's an ongoing evolving process and I'm still learning where those boundaries are what's right and wrong and I just want to continue learning and using that information so thank you guys for watching 
I feel really weird trying to promote or plug anything here at the end, but if you have any thoughts or feelings about this issue or about a similar issue, feel free to leave a comment down below. Any kinds of references or thoughts or ideas you have, I'd really appreciate. Thanks for watching! Bye!